Erechin Dav Gimel. We're continuing with the sugya of what's the meaning behind the word Akol, what does it come to include? So now the Gemara brings another 13 cases throughout Shas that the Mishnah says Akol, and what does it come to include? The Mishnah says, Akol Chayom Bezimun, we know, we say Rabbi Yisai Nevoreich, Rabbi Yisai Nevoreich, Benchen. You take three people and you make Zimun. Everybody's Chayv and Zimun, says the Gemara, it comes to include Noshev Avadim, women and slaves. They are also chayiv to make zimon when there are three women. Now, if there are two men, a woman is not mitzayiv to the men. But if there are three women eating, to have a chayiv zimon, Taisa says that it's a rishos in our days. Now, it also says hakol mitzayiv in the zimon. Anybody could join the zimon, as we just said, a woman can't. What does it come to include? It comes to include a minor, a katan that understands who you're benching to. Although in the Yerushalmi it says that a minor is not mitzvah if you need to be a gadol, and that's actually machlekes the machaber and the Rama. It says in the Mishnah, "Kol metam beziva." Everybody has tumas zav. What does it come to include? Even a baby that's a day old is included. Either we learn it from the words ish ish, or simply the fact that the Torah says zachar nekev, and the Torah doesn't limit it to an age. It says, "Kol metam tumas meis." Everybody becomes tamei. To a mace, to a corpse, it comes to include even a cut and a minor, because it says nafshois. As long as he's alive, he's tomei. The fact that it says ish, which I would think means an adult, no, it just means that a cotton does not get kares for going into the base hamidrash betuma. I call metam ben Everybody becomes tomei when they have a negat saras. Comes to include a cotton as well, because it says adam. The fact that it says Hatsarua comes to be Marba, include a woman. Now, the Torah says Ish by Negas, so I would think maybe not a woman. No, a woman is not included in Priya and Prima, meaning she doesn't have to rip her clothes and let her hair grow long like a man does. Hakol Roynes HaNegoyim. All Koyhanim could check Negoyim, Tsaras, and say whether it's a Tsaras or not. It comes to include even somebody that doesn't know anything about Tsaras, a Koyin Amaretz where a Yisrael is with him and teaches him the halacha on the spot. Although he doesn't know all the halacha, he just knows this specific one, he can pass him. Har Adumad also says the word hakol. What does it come to include? It comes to include that, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even a minor could mix the ashes of Par Aduma, and according to Chacham, even a woman could mix it. It says by Par Aduma that everybody could do the haza, the sprinkling of the ashes of Par Aduma, and some of this tamit mimeis, it comes to include an RL, somebody that doesn't have a brismila, not because he's a Russia, but because his brothers died from brismila, so he has a halacha like Tvul Yom. And we learn from a Tvul Yom, somebody that's Tomei, went to the mikvah, is just waiting for nightfall to become tar, he's usher to eat truma, but he's kosher to do the hazav of paraduma. It says, Hakal Shoichtim, everybody can check. One comes to include a kusi, and one comes to include a mumer. We're talking about a mumer, and somebody that's went off the derech because of taivas, but such a person, if given the choice of eating kosher meat, he'll eat kosher meat if it's not too, too much of a tirchas. If you give him a knife without any pegimois, he will shecht it kosherly. Hakol malin la'eretz Yisrael, meaning you can force your family, your wife, to move to Eretz Yisrael. It comes to include a slave, that if he wants to, to sell the slave, the slave could say, I want to be sold in Eretz Yisrael, and he can force his master to do so. It says, Not everybody, you can't force anybody out of Eretz Yisrael to Chutz Laaretz. So that comes to include a slave that ran away from Chutz Laaretz Eretz Yisrael. You can't force him out. Now, according to the Ma'adama, that says specifically evident that Mishnah. So what does it come to include? It comes to include that even if you're going from a beautiful mansion in Chutz Laaretz in America, you could force your wife, specifically your wife, to move to Eretz Yisrael and live in a very weak house. Halach is... You could force your family to move from anywhere in Israel to Yerushalayim. Again, comes to include a case where you're moving from a beautiful home to not such a nice home. And you can't, and you could, you can't force anybody to come from Yerushalayim out of Yerushalayim to the rest of Israel, even if you're going from a really not nice house to a nice house. Now we're going to switch gears to the words in the, our mission that says, Koyhanim Levim Yisraelim. There are many other times in Shas that they're brought down. What's the significance? In Sukkot it says, that Koyhanim Levim Yisrael Archaiv and Sukkah, it comes to include Koyhanim, even though a Koyin, it says, you should be with your wife on Sukkah, in the Sukkah, 
and that could cause tumor. And if a chayin is tummy, he can't perform the avoda. It could be a conflict with his avoda. Nevertheless, just like somebody that's traveling is chayv in a sukkah at night when he's not traveling, so to a chayin, if he's not performing the avoda, he's chayv in a sukkah. Since a chayin is chayv, I would think, since a chayin is not in the halacha of shatnas when he wears the big the kahuna that have shatnas, but when he's done with his avoda, he has to remove those begadim according to Rashi, and therefore he is in the parish of shatnas, and therefore he's in the parish of tzitzis. Tfilin. Also, I would think a chayin is potter from film because when he performs the avoid and he's wearing his big de kuna, he has a shirt on his arm and he can't put tefillin on his arm directly. It's a chatzitza. So I would think he's potter from tefillin shiraish. Kamashlon is chayv in tefillin shiraish. It says, shoifer blowing, shoifer koyhanim levim Yisraelim. I would think that since koyhanim are not in the midst of Yoival because they could actually sell a field on Yoival itself and they can redeem their field within two years where Yisrael cannot do those two things. Kamashlon, they are in Yoival because when it comes to Shemitah Sikhsafim and sending out the slave. In the Beis HaMikdash, just a side Allah that we learned from our Gemara, in the Beis HaMikdash, they used to blow trumpets on Yantav and Shchaydish when they were makriv the Karbanis Tzibur. And in Yoival, they used to dive in Kippur, like on Rosh Hashanah, Malchi, Zechreinus, and Shoifreis. And they would blow the Shoifar on Yoival, just like they blew it on Rosh Hashanah. Have a wonderful day.